Welcome back, everyone. Today we're going to be working on the Central Pneumatic 21 gallon air compressor. Um, the issue this compressor was having specifically, it would not gain air over uh, 30, 35 pounds. Pretty much would just stay running and uh, not generating any air besides the what was in the tank. Um, got this on Facebook Marketplace for only 20 bucks. Uh, Could have went to high school had it. So I bought it up real quick and then went to look apart, pulled the head off the motor, found out the reed valve was broken. I have the broken reeds in, inside. Um, so we went ahead and ordered new reeds. I got a new reed put on here and I used a little dab of grease just like everyone recommends just to hold it in there. So when you turn it upside down, it doesn't fall out. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. So I just got this covered so nothing gets in here. Just a rag. We're gonna go ahead and take our other reed and put it on the motor. And then we're gonna put our gasket on top of the head, put all the bolts through at the same time, and then we're gonna turn it upside down. So we're gonna put each bolt up through from the bottom. Hold those two through the other two. We got this like this, we're gonna flip it upside down. Once we get it oriented the proper way. Alright, so that goes there. So this is gonna sit just like this. I'm gonna do it with three for now because it's gonna be easier just to line it up. And it should just fit down like that. Oh no. Almost lost the crush washer. This other washer is for the cover. So now we got the head back on. We're gonna go ahead and hand tighten all these bolts and then do a cross pattern, torque them down. I've heard people of stories about people redoing these and then um, going a little overzealous with the head bolts here and breaking them off. So we really don't want to do that. So I'm going to be very careful on how much, um, how many foot pounds I put to each uh, bolt here on the head. Pretty much want to go ahead and snug all of them up and then go on a cross pattern and tighten them just like you would a, a wheel or a wheel on a race car or anything else like that. You just want a nice tight seal, but you don't want to overdo it. Sorry, it's a little cold out here. I got the sniffles. It's thinking of like the 30s today. Not very warm. All right, that seems good for that. So we're gonna go ahead and plug our line back in here. as simple as just bending it and putting it underneath it. It pops up in there. Kind of want to push it up in there a little bit. And this uh, washer will pull it up and, and pretty much make the fitting uh, nice and tight. So I've heard people um, also redo this job, um, replace 
the reeds that were broken. But then they run it like this without the shroud on to test it. And the whole principle of this fan right here and these blades is that it pulls air from one direction this way, sucks it in and spits it out this side of the engine or the air compressor motor rather. So if you don't have that shroud on, you're gonna overheat and you're pretty much just gonna ruin, ruin your compressor. So not sure everyone if everyone knew that or not, but that's a, a thing to just kind of keep in mind. Um, so now we're gonna put the shroud back on. It's just as simple as putting the cover on top of it and putting some screws on. I don't remember exactly how this went on, but I'm pretty sure it's fairly simple. Yep. Yep, you just kind of line it up. It's nothing special. Go ahead and put some of these bolts back in. We're gonna hand tighten all the ones that we can just hand start. Those ones going. We'll get these on this side. Some of these might all not go back on because some of them are kind of goofy places. Like there's a lower one down here that I had a hard time getting out. So we'll, when there's six, seven screws in it, if you leave one out, it's not going to make that big of a deal on a shroud. It's just a cover. It's just securing it. So uh, I think we got one more we can access easily, and then we're going to have to. Um, See if we can get that last one then. I'm kind of using just a, a flat screwdriver and then a, a 3 8 socket. That way I can kind of get in there and have a long handle to turn this instead of just a socket. That shouldn't be kicking on. We're going to shut that off. Tank's got a leak in it somewhere, one of the airlines does. That's what that means. That was on pretty much overnight with air in it. And if it kicked on like that, it means that air's going down. No one's been out here to use it, so good thing I got the new compressor here. Get these bolts tightened up and we'll be good to go. And we can fire it up and I know it's gonna go past 30 PS, 35, 40 PSI now. Because it's a very common issue with these, unfortunately, is the the reeds go bad on them. This one screw over here I'll try to get, but I don't know if we're gonna have any luck with that. It's just in a really, really awkward spot. Big hands. It wants to start, but I don't know. I think I might just leave that one out. It's a really weird spot.
I got it just started. I just got to get it sunk now. Just the best of my ability, tighten. That's good enough. All right, let's fire this mamma jamma up and see what we got now. Let me replace the reeds and we're gonna see how she runs. and see what happens. how high it goes. We're at 50 PSI right now. We're gonna go outside so it's not as noisy in here. Show you outside. It's wet, it's rainy today in Western New York. All this wood, I did not have time to get stacked. I'm pretty much just trying to add to this pile until it's as sky high as I can, even possibly as tall as this building. And then we're going to start stacking up in multiple rows all, all throughout the front and we're going to put signs out labeling firewood for sale. With maybe even a drop box, the steel box for money. We'll see here. Uh, but this is from the other day what I got done. Beautiful, beautiful pieces of wood in here. It's a wet and rainy day in Western New York today. We'll go back and see that compressor and see how we're doing if we're over 50 PSI or where we're at. These are all the millions, show us ribbons from yesterday, the other day, that you guys got to see on, on the new bucking table setup. Again, this table's cut right in half right here specifically, 16 inches from this board here to the center, and then from the center to this board again is 16 inches. So it's just pretty much line things up in the middle, trim them to fit in the table and cut them right in half. 
I gotta put a backstop on this that's more permanent. I just have a pallet piece pretty much against it right now, just to stop logs from going back and hitting the door. Um, I gotta reinforce this table and possibly uh, do some more bracing to it and stuff like that. Uh, possibly put a bigger top on it. The compressor just shut off now. So it looks like everything is working right. If it's back to probably 120 pounds, what it should be. Yep, 120, 125 PSI. So that's perfect, just where it's supposed to be. So that's how you fix a central pneumatic air compressor that doesn't want to go over 34, 40 pounds. You pull the head off right here, these four bolts, those reeds, one of them's probably going to be broken. It's a common occurrence with these machines. Some people buy them and replace the reeds every couple of years. Some people replace the, the reeds every couple months. I don't personally don't know what's the cause of it. If it's just having moisture in your system and not taking care of it, there was really no rust on the re old reeds. They were stainless, I believe, and the new ones are stainless as well. Um, but they, the old one was broken in half. So you could clearly tell that the reed was damaged. I gotta do an oil change on it soon. The oil's looking a little sore for comfort. It's not super bad color, but I'd like to have a better color of oil in there. Also, I need to drain it and put some fresh in there. That way there's some fresh. Here are the specs on this compressor. It's 21 gallons. It's rated for 2.5 horsepower, stage one, 120 amps, or 220 volts at 14 amps. And it's switched off at 125 PSI. Just be careful once this is running. This is your intake, but this does get hot. That's why there's a sticker here that says, watch your fingers because you will get burned. So now we're going to go ahead and clear out this corner here, which I was talking about the other day. And we're going to get all this organized and straightened up and moved out. Possibly going to move this work light over more. That way I have more lighting over here as well. And we're going to get the new compressor set up on this little table here that's already custom built for this. We're going to move all the junk all this crap and we're going to get that compressor mounted one way with the hoses coming out this way and the mine mounted pretty much the same way with the auxiliary tank either on the side of it or somewhere else i have to go to harbor freight today and get the connector to put this in line it's just the hose the hose i have is leaking so i don't want to put a leaking hose on my compressor that i just fixed up for 20 bucks and it's pretty much like brand new now so 20 dollars some people just don't want to mess around with it. They don't have any knowledge of how engines work or how anything mechanical works. So they just kind of throw it away. Stuff like this you can find all the time if you just keep your eyes open. This had a ton of water in it when I first got it. There was probably a good three gallons of water in the bottom of it. I'm not kidding. Um, it was so heavy to lift and I could hear it sloshing when I picked it up. First thing I did was drain that water out. Now that this is the first tank of air that's ran, ran through this compressor with the new reeds. I will be using my blow gun to blow out whatever I need to more or less and clean some stuff off like this, all this dust up here. And then I'm going to be draining the water out of it again, because I know there's probably more condensate that has formed inside the tank um, do, from that first initial draining. Cause the walls, I'm sure of the tank were all still wet from all that water. So you have to imagine just because the water is out, doesn't mean all the condensate and all the little droplets are gone as well. So just keep that in mind. Um, but I'll let you guys know how this this compressor works out for the shop. I'm going to be using it to blow off my chainsaws and stuff like that and mainly just clean parts off. Um, I do have another air tank, but I'm going to be selling this one because I have no use for it now that I have. Um, this is only a five gallon, but this can be set up in the same fashion where you can use a, a T, put a T fitting on that. And this would just be used as an auxiliary. So you'd have an extra five gallons of air capacity. But when I have a 21 gallon air capacity here, and then I have, I think another seven gallons on this tank here, I really don't need, yeah, this is a seven gallon reservoir tank that more or less lets you uh, run air through it and pretty much whatever you have in your line pressurized. If you're pressurized to 80 PSI, 80 PSI is always gonna be in here. So we're gonna get that hooked up. I just have to go get that one quarter, the hose replaced by Harbor Freight. Um, and then we should be good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and get clearing all this off over here. I won't spare you guys the boring crap of just watching me clean because I know that's not what you're here for. I know you're here for the engines. I know you're here for the loud noises. And I know you're here to learn some stuff. I may not be the best teacher in the world, but I have fixed a few things in my day. So 
that does it for the Central Pneumatic Harbor Freight brand air compressor. Thank you everyone for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you like what you see, come on back and I'll have more, more uh, content of similar nature soon. Next, this Aaron's uh, EZR 1742 Zero Turn is gonna be getting service. The deck um, has got some issues, but more importantly, we're gonna be airing up all the tires, just getting her running, getting her outside. We're gonna put a wood cart on her and we're gonna get some actual wood yarded up from the yard instead of just making uh, runs with a baby stroller and uh, a wheelbarrow because right now that's how I transport wood is that that guy right there so everyone st take care boost addict out